Pregati, pregati, fa freddo. Ho cominciato il divino. Ascolta, venite. Vada la mia casa! Fuoco! Il ragazzo! No! È stato scelto per la sua perfezione mentale! Auf eine Art und Weise verändert durch eine Erfindung unserer Wissen. Das arme Tier, wie Sie sehen, werden es zweimal zweimal state cavie umane.
It's called Project Rebirth, Mr. President. Dr. Vaselli, a scientist who escaped from Italy, has perfected a process that can take a boy with birth defects and make him as fast and as strong as an athlete. Hitler already has a version of this super soldier, an Italian boy called the Red Skull. We will have a regiment of these men, and we found our first volunteer out in California. His name is Steve Rogers. I'll be here to get you in a few minutes. I love you, Mom. Come on, guys. We're gonna get one last shot of the whole gang, okay? The uh, departing hero with his beloved friends. Come on. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Just a minute, Russ. Sorry, everybody. We, we can't do this without Bernie. Bernie! Bernie! Imagine not knowing what you're doing or where you're going.
follow my lead. Fair enough, Lieutenant Fleming. This doesn't seem necessary for girls to go to college, honey. How's the pot roast today, Roz? Oh, about as good as it was yesterday. Mm. Well, we'll just hang up our coats. Do whatever you want with them, mister. Fleming. Attention, all personnel, please move to your station. Prepare for final systems check down. Stand by for a move to stage one. Senator Kirby. How nice to see you, sir. How are you? General? Colonel? This isn't Mussolini's Italy. You are free to change your mind whenever you... Save it. Okay, Doctor. Because of you, I have the chance to make a wrong thing right. I thank you for that. Commencing stage one. So this process can take a frail boy with polio, give him the strength and speed of a world-class athlete. Think what kind of army we'll have. Let's just make sure our boy comes out of this safe and sound before we go counting our chickens. Where'd you get your guinea pig? Happens to be the best damn candidate out of 600 volunteers. It's gonna be a national hero. Stand by for a move to Not stage exactly. Two. His name's a secret. Only Dr. Vasselli and myself know who he really is. He kept it that way to protect his family. For the rest of the world, he's just codenamed Captain America. He may not be Superman, but he'll be a living symbol of what this country stands for. Began the infusion. With the breaker commencing stage two. to meet Richard Ehrlich. He's a special observer sent by President Roosevelt. Oh, remarkable work, Dr. Vasselli. Congratulations. Bless you, my boy. Stop them. Never give up. Oh, Dr. Frizzelli. <laughs> Doctor, I need that boy ready for action in the next 48 hours. Colonel, that young man is lucky to have survived the surgery. I'm on a level with you, Doctor. What's at stake here is the lives of thousands of innocent people. Our intelligence boys have told us that the Jerrys have an experimental rocket ready to fire at a target somewhere in the United States within the next five days. We're just gonna have to wait and see. 
He's our only hope, Doctor. If the situation changes, I'll certainly let you know. Colonel? Colonel Lewis? Where did you say that lawn site was? more time to practice, like about a month. Don't you worry. You're gonna have those two resistance fellas down there to take you through that launch site like they was escorting you to the senior prom. Besides, you got that crazy fireproof uniform Dr. Vaselli made up for you. She didn't know much about camouflage. <laughs> nope. But she sure did love the red, white, and blue. Sir, there's something nobody's talked about. When do I get some fresh troops in my battalion? Dr. Vaselli had all the details to the process in her head, not written down. Same for whatever she made the uniform and the shield out of. She thought it was safer that way. I'm sorry, I believe that you're the only one of you there's ever gonna be. Ready! You ready, son? Yeah, yeah. I won't let America down, sir. Just when I am needing help of my English lessons. 
It seems the Americans have made a poor choice for their champion. Pity him! He is like a child! Dr. Vasily has died a failure. on the table. Ah, am I saying ah, right, American? Ah, I want good English to speak when I am getting to New York! Ah. Sturmtruppen vom Abschussplatz weg! You are a perfect symbol of America, my brother. Weak and serpidious. You have even failed to teach me English, but uh, I am much practicing while you sleep. Where is the big bomb going? The big bomb is going to the... Uh, uh, are you say Casabianca? No, no, don't tell me. I know. It's White Alps. A present for President Roosevelt. Tell me, do you think I could be president of the United States sometime? <laughs> Wait. Listen to me. No time, flyboy. Two can travel cheaply as one, you sick bastard. Now stop the launch. Stop it or I'm taking you with me. Unmöglich. Es ist zu spät. Zu spät. This is not time. That's just where we're going to be in the morning when you wake up. Now you get to bed. But I want to see the president. And don't wake your father. He's got that early meeting at the State Department. When I grow up, I'll be the president.
and this guy on the rocket broke the wing and stopped it from blowing up the whole White House and President Roosevelt. You believe me, don't you, Sam? <sighs> believe you? Pictures don't lie, and neither do best friends. It's a good thing I am your friend. You know why you didn't get blown up, don't you? Why? Because I loaned you my Captain Midnight Lucky Decoder. You had it on, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <sighs> you see, I told you it worked. Thanks just... a lot, Sam. It's okay, it's okay. You see, just got to figure out what it was. Did he have a trident? No, we didn't have a trident. Okay, so it wasn't submarine, and it couldn't have been Human Torch. So we would have blown up the rocket before it could land. Did you wear a mask? Yeah, it was blue with a white A on it. Very interesting, Tom. Gosh, this will make a swell story for this gold paper. It was the greatest thing I ever saw. And I'll never forget it, Sam. Never, ever. Never, ever. Unconditional surrender of Japan. Tom Kimball graduates today as a representative of a new post-war generation that will lead the world into the space age. Any price, bear any burden, oppose any foe. I heard Tom Kimball joined to go to Vietnam because he felt it was his obligation as an American. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I have never been a quitter. Old Tom gave up his practice to go help out in Africa. His conscience wouldn't allow him to sit and do nothing about the poverty there. There was a time in this nation's history when people took responsibility for the world they lived in. And by God, I think it's time we got back to that. Good evening. Thomas Kimball was elected last night on a platform that one man can make a difference. Thomas Kimball was elected President of the United States by the narrowest margin in history. President Kimball leaves this week for Rome, where he will join the leaders of 27 nations for a historic summit. There, he will attempt to negotiate a multilateral ban of environmentally damaging industrial practices. We're going to have to find millions of new jobs for the people who make disposable plastics, toxins, household pesticides. It's bad medicine. And nobody said the medicine was going to taste any good. But can we afford not to take it? I don't think so. If we don't take this medicine now, we'll all die. Slowly. But we'll die. Thank you. Ah, General Fleming. Mr. President, well, I've just been reading your environmental guidelines bill here. It ain't gonna work, sir. General Fleming, the environmental guidelines stand as written, and I don't think you or the Pentagon have enough senators in your pocket to change them. Well, sir, I, I want to live on a, a clean planet just as much as the next fella. You just simply can't expect us to cut back on our solid waste.